<laughs> Hi, and welcome to Sunday with Mike. On today's show, we're going to cover my very own top 10 classic Christmas songs that I think you should have in your library. We'll discuss if national awards really matter as a DJ. We'll cover some multimeter basics and also sales tax for your online purchases. So grab a cup of coffee and join me. I'll be right back. With Christmas parties coming up, I thought I would share my own top 10 classic Christmas song list. Granted, these are the tried and tested oldies that even your grandparents will know by heart. I wanted to share this list mostly so that the newer DJs, who may not know which of the hundreds of songs that you hear every year, are the real classics that are here to stay long after we've all retired. Also, the first song in my list may be more of a regional hit than a national one, but I assure you, I can't DJ a Christmas party in my area without somebody demanding that I play it. So without further delay, here we go. Charles Brown, Please Come Home for Christmas. Bobby Helms, Jingle Bell Rock. Elmo and Patsy, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Brenda Lee, Rocking Around the Christmas Tree. Jose Feliciano, Feliz Navidad. Nat King Cole, The Christmas Song. Perry Como, Frosty the Snowman. Dean Martin, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow. Gene Audrey, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And the Fontaine Sisters, Silver Bells. Each year, there are many new Christmas songs that come out, but I feel that you need to have a handful of the classic Christmas songs sprinkled into your mix. There are many more classics than what I have listed above, but that will get you started, and if you're new to Christmas or holiday parties, as they tend to be called these days, this will be a great starter list for you. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Hi, and welcome back. So I wanted to ask you, do national awards really matter to your DJ business? I think they do. There are some local awards that is really nothing more than a popularity contest. There isn't really any head-to-head -head competition. No two businesses were actively competing against one another. The only thing that it took to win was to have more of your friends vote for your company than the other guy's friends. That's not a real award in my opinion. That's just an award for being popular and like being the homecoming king or queen. For a real business award to matter, you need to be fairly paired against other businesses that serve the same type of clients that you do. Since they are based on actual client reviews, these reviews are very important to you as a business and also to your future clients because most of today's millennials are, read, are readers of reviews. They want to research those reviews. They want to know what your former clients think about your business. They tend to trust the reviews more than the previous generations did. Take, for example, the Knotts Award. It's an annual award that's given to the top 3% of each group of wedding professionals in the entire country. Who wouldn't like to be in an exclusive group with the top 3% of the best of the best? 
If you look at Wedding Wire's award, you'll see that it's the same kind of exclusive club, but this time it's limited to the top 5% of the entire country. Both companies offer small banners that you can add to your website, giving you more credibility than you would otherwise have. Since most of the wedding clients are millennials who are known for researching and looking for reviews when making a purchase, why would you not want to be listed among the best of the best in our industry and improve your odds of being hired? To me, it doesn't make any sense for those who say, I don't care about these awards. Does that mean that you don't care about your clients either? It's just my two cents, and I'd like to know what you think about it. Hi, and welcome back. Today I wanted to share some multimeter basics with you. This tool is very valuable if you know how to use it, and many people are clueless. So today I wanted to share the bare bones basics just to get you started. There are many brands and types of meters that you can buy, but if you buy an expensive one, chances are it will be the last one that you ever buy. I like a digital meter and my trusty Fluke brand has been with me for a really long time. Why do we need this tool and how can it really help you? Well, it allows you to make precise measurements that you wouldn't be able to make without it. For example, you can measure AC voltage on a wall outlet, you can measure DC voltage on your batteries, uh, you can test your wall ward adapters, power supplies for your computer and other devices, speaker cables, fuses, light bulbs, extension cords, and so much more, all with just basic knowledge of how to use a multimeter. So today we wanted to do something a little different and set up what I'm going to call the coffee cam. See, I actually have coffee in that cup. A lot of people think I don't, but I do. All right, so I've got a multimeter set up, and the idea here is that I wanted to show you some basic uses. So if you, when you buy a multimeter, or if you have one, uh, drag it out, and you're going to notice that there are different settings that you can use, and the little sine wave is for measuring AC. So I have an extension cord all set up and ready to go here. It's an Edison, uh, and we're in the United States, so I should be seeing 120 volts. And instead, uh, I see 119.7.8, right? So that's good. So that tells me this extension cord is good. I've got great voltage coming to me. So what if I wanted to measure one of these wall warts, uh, these little you know things that run everything in our lives that's DC? Well, I just go to the next scale, which is now DC. I plug the wall wart into that extension cord that we just tested. And then I go to the end of it over here, which is the little, it's called a coaxial plug. And uh, if I look at the, the legend on the back of the adapter, it tells me that this should be 12 volts DC and that the middle, the inside is the positive. So I stick my positive lead in the middle I go to the outside and then we measure and you'll see it says 17.64 volts. Wow, it's supposed to be 12 but it's measuring 17. Well, why is that? Well, it's because we don't have a load. We This isn't connected to anything. So when you connect it to a computer or whatever device this was meant to run, it will actually drop down because you're drawing some current at that point. All right, so what else can we test with this? Well. Let's go to a, a known good battery, just to give you an example. So this is a AA battery. It should test 1.5 volts in theory. And look at there, 1.612. So we're good on that one. And then I've drug up one that's mostly dead so that you can get a comparison. And if you look at this little AAA, um, if it were good, it would measure the same thing, 1.5 or better. And, uh, but it's not, it's weak and just about dead and it's 1.3 volts. So I would know that one needs to be replaced. So what about other things like light bulbs? Um, if, any, if you use any of these still, most of us have gone to LED. Well, there's two settings that you can use for that. One is ohms where you actually measure the, the resistance. So you just take one lead and hold it to the outside. And then the other one, you hold it to the tip 
and then you can see that the filament inside this bulb uh, is, equ is equal to about 600 ohms. But if all you want is a quick go, no-go test and your meter has a diode tester on it, then uh, you get an audible tone whenever there's a complete circuit. Like that, right? So if all I want to know is, is this good or bad, I don't need to know how many ohms it is. I know it's good, right? I can go to a fuse and do the same thing. Here's one of these little bitty GMA fuses. Make sure you guys can see that. There it is. Now, granted, you can look through the glass a lot of times and see if they're broken, but it's not the same thing as knowing for sure that there's continuity there, and that's what we've just confirmed. Also, sometimes you'll have a fuse that has a ceramic. It's white. Uh, you can't see inside of the fuse, and a meter would be the only way to know for sure. Or your air conditioning fuses, that kind of stuff, where they have the paper wrapped around it. So that's today's show and tell. I hope that uh, that helps you and enjoy your meter. Have you noticed that any of your recent online purchases lately have sales tax starting to be charged on some of those uh, those orders? It's a new trend that I think will become more and more popular with our state governments. One of the advantages that online shopping always had over local retail stores is that you never had to pay any sales taxes. Many would say true, but you had to pay for the shipping and handling, and that kind of balanced everything out. Today, more and more, uh, we don't have to pay for shipping and handling because retailers are offering free shipping with your purchase. Now your local government is noticing that as online sales continues to ramp up uh, each year that their tax base is starting to go down. Um, and that's because more people are buying online each year than the previous. So local governments are starting to charge sales tax for your online purchases. Not everyone is collecting these taxes as of now, but you should be on the lookout because soon they will be. I first noticed them on a recent purchase with Amazon.com. So if you have any large online orders that you want to make anytime soon, now might be a great time to order those items from a vendor who's not collecting sales tax yet. Because you can bet that as time goes on, everyone will start collecting the tax and there will be one less advantage to ordering online. So that's going to be my show for today. I'll be back next week with all new topics to help you and your business. Be sure to share the show with your friends and give me your thoughts down in the comments section down below. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. So until next Sunday, be safe and thanks for watching.